Welcome to Rick's Corner. I got Rich Piana back. We've uh, had so many subjects, and we were just talking about you never run out of ideas on things to talk about for bodybuilding and getting in shape because it's an endless pit of information. There's information from 1920s, 30s on to now, and and it just it just magnifies and magnifies and magnifies and magnifies and becomes this big thing and everybody takes a pool of info and they say now what one do I pick and which one do I use well they're all good you just gotta find out what works for you and, and some of the things I mean the first thing you see when you look at a person is their teeth now <laughs> is there a nice smile like mine but when you're looking at somebody and you know you work out you go for the arms you go for the shoulders you want to see how big their arms are right right and then they say how much can you bench well if you're a bodybuilder it doesn't matter Nope. <laughs> if you're a power lifter, it does. All right, so you want your arms to look good because you're wearing short sleeve shirts. You're out in the summertime, and those are what hang out. So how do you add more size to your arms? Rich is going to tell you. There's certain ways to do this. You can overtrain them. You can undertrain them. And, and you've got to find out the balance of what works for you. Exactly. Okay. And so, you've got to try it. Don't go on the Internet and just read and listen. You know, you have to try. Right. You know, give everything a try and find out what does work best for you. Exactly. Now, you guys will write back with opinions on what you do, which we like to hear because your opinion is valuable and it may have worked for you. So if you if you see this and you want to post your opinions and what worked, we want to hear it too because you might you might have found something that we don't know. Like, for example, there's a tricep machine in the gym. It's over on the corner over there and it has those long handles yep. and you sit and you do these. Yep. I don't like it. Yep. But I'll tell you what I did. What would you do? I stood up and I put my, my, my heels on my hand on the yep. bar that holds it and I do it from here out like this, uh -huh. like skull crushers. Yeah. Works perfect. Yeah, now you like it. I like it now. Yep. It's easier to balance. No, for sure. It's and more it, comfortable, too, Yeah, but it's not comfortable sitting in that machine. Exactly. If something's uncomfortable, you're not going to enjoy it. You're not going to get the most out of it. Yep. All right, so how do you put arm size on? Uh, arm size, you know, arms were an obsessive thing for me ever since I was a kid. Now, I was genetically gifted, you know, believe it or not. A lot of people don't believe it, but oh, I was but you were. genetically given with legs and back. I had a huge back and huge legs, and my arms were small. And I hated it, and it drove me out of my mind, you know. And when something, you're going to work your hardest, you know, to change that. So I was obsessed with making my arms bigger. So I tried everything there was in the world, every single theory, everything, every single workout to make my arms grow. Um, and, you know, I finally found what worked for me. And I've told other people, and it has worked for a lot of other people, and a lot of people out there have tried stuff that I've said, and they've said it works, you know, it's great. But it doesn't mean it's going to work for everyone. No, and you got to stay with it. You so give it yeah. A chance, yeah. So personally, for me, I used to train arms super heavy. You know, I watched Arnold back in the day doing the cheat curls with two seventy five, and you know he had the best arms ever back in the day. So I was like, you know, that's what I need to do. So you know, I threw on heavyweight for years and years. You know, my arms didn't grow. They got stronger, but they didn't grow. Which right. logically, that made no sense to me. It's like okay, my, I can curl hundred pounds more than I could a year ago, but my arm measures the same. But, but I'm like, what hold, the hell is going on with one that? Second. I was sitting on the bike when I saw a guy doing curls at the squat rack, where mm -hmm. a lot of people do. He had 130, he had 245s a bar and two tens on each side. He must have been 180 pounds with a buggy whip arm. And mm -hmm. he was curling this thing like it was nothing. And I'm thinking, <laughs> strong all as that weight, but your arms have not grown. Yeah, yeah, something's not right. Something's not right there. Exactly. I mean, he's strong, but he's not getting any arm size. Oh, exactly. And that's where I was, you know. And so I, I you know, I learned more about the pump and squeezing and contracting yeah. and, and feeling and concentrating and making those arms burn you know and if you watch pumping iron you watch arnold when he starts doing that concentration curl you see the pain in his face and you see the arm blowing up in oh, the yeah. veins and he talks about the pump and a lot of people still to this day don't understand what the pump actually is no i've had clients in the past who look at me they say you know how's my pump and i'm like it's not about what i see it's about what you feel exactly what are you feeling what do you mean what am i feeling i'm like i have to sit and explain it you know a pump is just you have so much burn and, and pain in the muscle that you just can't stand it. They refer to it as feeling tight. Yeah. My arms yeah. feel tight. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, 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 the pump's an incredible thing. And it a lot is. of people, when they start to feel it, they stop because it hurts. Yeah. Well, then you're not getting a pump. You're stopping before the actual workout's beginning. You know, the workout starts when it starts to hurt. Yeah, when it starts exactly. to burn, that's when you should start counting. Because right. that's when you're actually doing something. So for me, I found that, you know, doing lighter weight, higher reps, going for the pump, going for the squeeze, uh, my arms just started blowing up. You know, they just started growing like crazy. And um, I believe there's two ways to make the muscle grow. You know, tearing the muscle down, having it rebuild, and pushing blood into that muscle, pumping it up, you know, stretching the fascia tissue and constantly pumping oxygen. And I think that muscle blowing up and blowing up is, is teaching the muscle and training the muscle and making the muscle become bigger. Yeah. And so those are the two ways that make the muscle grow. Now, which one's better? You need both. But for arms, for me, the pump method is 
superior. Now for back and chest, definitely the heavy weight. Yeah. You know, is what got my back the thickness, the width was heavy weight. Now when I'm training back heavy, my arms are getting that heavy work too. You know, when you're doing heavy lap pulls, heavy rows, whether you like it or not, your arms are, are involved in pulling in a heavy weight. Absolutely. So yeah. on arm day, you don't necessarily need to really hit heavy weight. You just hit it two days ago when you trained back. So I go more for the pump. Uh, triceps, same thing. When you're yeah. bench pressing, you know, you're using a lot of triceps. You know, yeah. whether you realize it or not, those tries are pushing that weight. And so they're getting, you're getting that deep muscle fiber, you know, and you're, you're developing strength and you're working that tricep in a way of, you know, creating mass. So when it's tricep day, I believe, you know, light it up and go more for the pump. Isolate it. How do you know when you've done enough? For example, you're doing three or four sets. You've got a good good pump. I don't know if you get a pump any more than that. And you, sometimes you go beyond that and you kill the pump and it goes the other way. Then you, you've gone too far. You've gone too far, yes. exactly. And, you know, the thing is, is that sometimes you can kill the pump, not because you've done too much, but, you know, maybe you rested too long between sets. You talked yeah. to this person too long. You know, a pretty girl came your way and, you know, you stopped and had yeah. to chat with her for 10 minutes. You know, which, hey, I'm not knocking you. That's all good. I would do the same thing. Oh, I don't. I tell them to leave. I'm, I'm getting a pump <laughs> yeah. right now. Leave me the hell alone. Yeah, I'm busy here. You might look good, but I'm busy working out. Exactly. You know, but that's another way to, you know, lose the pump. And so as long as you're... As long as you keep going and keep going, you know, eventually, obviously, if you train too long, you can lose a pump. And sure. if you if you're if you had a pump and you're curling it, it's gone and you're done. It's over. Yeah, quit. you know, it's done. Yeah, it's it's done. You know. All right. I have one more question. What about before you train? If you take this uh, uh, super pump or something like that mm -hmm. before you train, do you think that helps? Um, you know, I, I think it does help. I've noticed a difference in some products. You know, I yeah. have noticed a little bit of a difference. Um, you know, another. Th you know, it, it's, it also depends on your breakfast, depends mm -hmm. on what you ate the night before. Mm -hmm. I'm sure as you know, you know, if you eat something that's that has a lot of salt and really high in carbs right before you go to bed, you know, the next day you wake up and you're just veiny and full oh, totally. and yeah. your pump at the gym is incredible. You know, so sodium plays a big role, carbs plays a big role, sugars. So, you know, also what you've eaten, you know, maybe what you ate for breakfast, what you ate the night before plays a big role in the pump. You know, right. if you go to the gym on an empty stomach, you're going to have a tough time getting a pump. There's two you know. theories on that. Now, I like to get up and eat before I go to the gym. I think I need fuel in order to train. Yeah. I have people tell me they don't eat before they go to the gym because it burns body fat. Yeah, yeah. They're more concerned with burning body fat than building Does muscle. it burn body fat? Um, you know, it does because you fasted all night. You don't have it. Depending on what you ate before you went to bed. But, right. you know, logically you're going to because you're on an empty stomach. So your body's using the fat, you know, for fuel. But you have no energy to train. Yeah, you, you don't have energy to train. As far as muscle building, it's not that productive. As mm -hmm. far as, you know... Um, getting rid of fat, yeah, okay. it, it works. But if you're trying to gain muscle, I would say you definitely need to have some food in your stomach, have okay. some carbs. One last question. We've exhausted that pretty much? I think so. Okay, I have one last question then. When your segment before, we are talking about eating in real food and putting size on, putting weight on, getting your calories up, mm -hmm. getting your arm size up, getting your back size up, and we're trying to gain and trying to gain and trying to gain. The last place we want to gain is in the waist. Right. We want to keep that down. I mean, your, your waist for a guy your size is small. I try. And you have no fat on it. <laughs> but, 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 it's, it's, but, but I'm saying this is a compliment, Thank number you. one. Thank you very number much. Number two, it's not easy to do. Yeah. It's not easy because when you eat, you do gain and, the, and your pants get tighter. Yep. So how do you prevent that? Uh, you know, for me, I use that as my gauge, my how my waist looks in the mirror, how deep my abs are, you know, how small my waist is. If I start to get a little overhang here, yeah. um, you know, I know I'm, I need to, you know, I need to do something either up the cardio you know up the up the training intensity up the training sessions how long i train for okay um drop the carbs a little bit you know i play with my carbs constantly you know sometimes i'll you know i eat less carbs at night obviously sometimes right. i'll eat no carbs at night um going on how i look i might do low carbs for a week straight just because i feel like i'm getting a little bit on the border of you know not looking good so i need to drop my carbs for a week sometimes i get so i get where i'm almost feel like i'm too lean believe it or not, because I, know, I, know. I, I like to stay somewhat full. You know, when you get too lean, you lose that fullness yeah, in the muscles. So absolutely. you got to find that even medium to where you're full, <laughs> you feel good, your muscles are full, you know, you're having good workouts, yeah. you're happy, you know, there's that even medium, but you still are looking the best you can. These are terms that a lot of people don't understand. Now, here's another one for you. I'm sure you're familiar with is vacuums. Sure. Now, nowadays, I just most... bought a new at uh, the the roller ball from my living room that I did oh. real well with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Who knows what a vacuum is today? We all know yeah. from back then, but it's an it's important. most people don't. No, they don't. most up and newcomers don't know what a vacuum is, yeah. and you know, 
doing vacuums on a regular basis is incredible for just bringing that waste in, you know. And I first read about it in Arnold's big encyclopedia book uh, for bodybuilding, and he explains it, talks about it, and that's the first time I ever tried it. And he he believed in doing it three times a day, you know, doing three sets, holding it for maybe ten to twenty seconds, mm-hmm. you know, religiously every day. It's hard and to do. It trains the muscles to, to keep everything in tight. You know, um, the more you do it, the smaller your waist can become. I'll post and, a picture of that so you guys can see it. Yeah, and it, it's an, it's actually it's it's something that's really overlooked nowadays. Very few guys. Frank Zane could do it. There very few guys could do it. Yeah, when done, it's amazing. Yeah. You know, and just in your everyday, how you look in clothes, how you look with your shirt off, it's going to improve that. You yeah. know, and everybody wants a small waist. Um, and it doesn't. It, in my opinion, if you have abs and your waist <clears> isn't <throat> small, then nobody cares no if you're thick waisted or you have a, a stomach and you have abs who cares yeah what's the point you yeah, know it's, it's not attractive you know so but, but there's not many having guys, a tight small waist yeah there's not many guys today that can do a vacuum no no not at all it's not even it's, part of competing anymore no you never see a guy on stage do a vacuum yeah you know i don't think any top professional bodybuilder can even do a vacuum i don't think you so know either. and uh you know, it's it looks incredible when done right. Oh sure. You know, and that's why these guys in the seventies had these little. I mean, that's not the only reason, but that's one of the reasons. You know, yeah. they had these little tiny waists. And to me, if you lose that tiny waist, then there's no point in doing what you're doing. Exactly. I mean, that's just my personal opinion. I think that, you know, bodybuilding is about symmetry. It's about aesthetics. And um, if you lose that small waist, then you know, I don't. Well, years ago, bodybuilding was about having white shoulders and a small waist. They always said, "Oh, you got the V taper. You got the V taper." Yep. And that's what it was. And like Steve Reeves, he had broad shoulders and a small waist. Most all the guys did. Today, you don't see. You see broad shoulders, and there's the waist. Yeah. So it's it's all changed throughout the years, but that's the most attractive look. No, definitely, definitely. And you know, it's gone the other way. And I wish these judges would change it. They could change it very easily. Sure. You know, all they you got to do is just these guys with the thinnest stomachs. Boom. You know, you're not placing. Exactly. And things would change immediately. They would. You know, and you know, it'd be it'd be a healthier sport, and it would get the general public into it more. Um, you know, become more widely accepted, and the physique now is starting to become more popular. It not starting to become. It has actually demolished bodybuilding altogether. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the physique and the bikini are taking over the world. Yeah, they've changed the whole you know? thing. But um, hopefully, that'll bring more people into the sport. And my theory on that is that. A lot of the physique competitors, you know, they're getting big. They enjoy, they enjoy what they're doing. You obviously want to keep getting gains, and I think eventually they are going to turn into bodybuilders. Because what are you going to do? Oh, I'm getting too big. I better stop working out. I better not. Well, work out they're hard. they're right at the borderline now, and then exactly. they'll just cross over and just get bigger. So I think it will actually help the sport of bodybuilding. A lot of people think it's not. I think that's going to actually help the sport of bodybuilding. Um, I, I think, think it will too. Because take people. a look. I'm back in my generation, not many guys worked out. There was ten of us at the beach that were seen around town that yeah. were bodybuilders. The rest weren't. Now you go to an audition today, you're out, in the, you're, almost every guy has a good build. Mm-hmm. Everybody's in good shape. They're not huge, but they're lean and they look good. Yeah. You know, and that's, that's where the country has gone, at least here on the West Coast. Uh, Midwest, it's a whole different story. <laughs> <laughs> but those guys do want to be bodybuilders, and they, they want to stay lean and hard, and they like to gain a little size, too, so it might transition. Yeah, I think so. I hope so. Definitely. Nice. Well, thank you, Rich. Well, thank you. This has been a real pleasure, and um, we got to keep these things rolling. Got to keep them rolling, and you guys. We're just, both busy. We need to make time. Yeah, yeah, we're making time for you because we like you. So don't get on there and criticize too hard. We really mean well by this, and we want to show you guys what it's like to train and get the results that you want. And we're doing it for you for free because we like you. Thanks again for watching Rick's Corner, and stay tuned for more because I'm going to have one in a week every week, brand new one, brand new one, brand new one. And also, you can catch me on EmpowerMe.tv, Rick Drayson Live and Tough and Tender. I have two other shows, one on fitness nutrition, one on relationships, which is really good because all you guys have relationships and your, wor- your girls are fighting with you all the time. I'll teach you how to get out of that one real quick. <laughs> Thanks again for watching. It's RickDrayson.com. He is the equalizer, baby. See you next time.